From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Our top story tonight, a violent rear end collision on Badger Road surprisingly sent no one to the hospital according to emergency responders. That's right. Alaska State Troopers say that a car traveling down Badger Road ran into the rear end of a truck driven by Dan Radio as he was turning onto Lyons Road. Firefighters from the North Star Volunteer Fire Department say the car burst into flames right after the collision and needed to be hosed down. Now, no one was severely injured during the accident. Radio says the driver that hit him is lucky to be safe and sound. Her airbag saved her life, I think. Great. Because she'd have been right in that windshield as hard as she hit me. Yeah, I got a little stiff neck. I figured that because I felt the cringe right after it happened when I started to move. But I think it'll be okay. Fire caused extensive damage to the roof of a house at 3288 Jefferson Drive in the Executive Estates subdivision early this morning. The blaze was reported at 218 a.m. by residents of a nearby home who saw flames when they looked out of their window. Occupants of the burning house discovered the fire when the power went out and they escaped unharmed. The roof of the roof and back of the house were burning when firefighters arrived, but they quickly knocked down the flames. Now it took several hours to make sure the fire was out because the flames had gotten into the insulation in the attic. Fire officials say it appears the fire started on the exterior of the house and spread up into the attic. Now the investigation into the fire is continuing. The Alaska Division of Elections is performing its third count of ballots from the November 4th general election. Independent candidate Bill Walker continues to lead Republican incumbent Sean Parnell in Alaska's gubernatorial race. As of 4 o'clock this afternoon, Walker had garnered 47.9 percent of the vote. That's a 1.7 percent lead on Parnell, a difference of nearly 4,500 votes. In Alaska's United States Senate race, which has already been called by the Associated Press, freshman incumbent Senator Mark Begich trails Dan Sullivan by over 7,600 votes. Begich made a gain of about 300 votes, but still trails Sullivan by 2.9 percent of the vote. Signing up for insurance through the online federal marketplace is expected to be easier this year. Enroll Alaska is the broker set up to help people get private health insurance under the Affordable Care Act. There are still some questions about how the renewal process will work. Officials say the insurance may automatically renew, but that people should check to see if, they planned they, if the plan they had last year is still the one they need. The open enrollment will run from tomorrow through February 15th. Now, those who don't get coverage do face a penalty. Two providers offer plans on Alaska's exchange, Primera Blue, Cross Shield, and Moda Health. Now, Alaska's Division of Insurance has approved rate increases for those companies in the coming year. Financial closing on the Interior Energy Project is set for mid-December. That's when the major players in the project, the Alaska Industrial Development and Export Authority, private contractor MWH, and distribution utilities reach a feasible financial agreement. As Jamie Schwartzwald reports, customer buy-in is also a major factor in reaching a financial close. Fairbanks Natural Gas, a local gas utility, spent a bulk of last summer running 31 miles of distribution pipe throughout town. The Interior Gas Utility is set to begin laying distribution pipe next summer in North Pole. The work is being done by both utilities on financing from ADA. This work could go for naught unless residents and businesses in the area convert their current heating systems and agree to purchase the gas. Absolutely. Demand is critical to the success of the, uh, the, uh, the IEP. The uh, higher the demand, the more people that convert, uh, the cheaper it is for everybody. Alaska Energy Authority Deputy Director for Policy and Outreach Gene Terrio said Wednesday that cost conversions can range from $2,500 to $10,000. On Thursday, the IGU hosted a home conversions workshop in North Pole. IGU spokeswoman Mindy O'Neill gave factors that will determine the cost of converting from a boiler system fueled by diesel to one fueled by natural gas. The age of the boiler, the size of a home, uh, how long uh, since their last cleaning? Is it a clean uh, system or not? Um, what other appliances they would like to hook up to natural gas? And um, really the age and the size of the home are going to be the big uh, contributors to the price of their conversion. Jamie Schwartzwald reporting. All right, when we come back, an American flag that flew over enemy territory was presented to a local businessman for his support. Also, Wood River Elementary played host today to military parents as a way of saying thank you. Those stories are next. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Fairbanks Evening News. The Fairbanks man accused of attempting to rob a Sears store with a pickaxe was granted bail this morning. 32-year-old Brandon Koenig Messer was indicted on first-degree robbery and third-degree felony assault charges. He pleaded not guilty to all charges in Fairbanks Superior Court earlier this week. This morning, Koenig Messer was granted a reduced bail of $1,500 plus a court-approved third-party custodian. As an additional condition of release, Koenig Messer is not allowed to possess any knives or guns. Trial for his case is set for January. Not guilty pleas for the Venati man facing serious felony charges after authorities say he tried to rob a male victim. 20-year-old Chance Eric, who was on the run from authorities, was arrested in Fairbanks last week after a resident reported he was damaging property while intoxicated. Eric was wanted on numerous felony charges from an August incident in which he and another male allegedly entered a home uninvited, took several items and pointed a knife at a male victim's chest. Authorities say the pair then beat the man who had to be taken to a medical center for treatment of his injuries. The trial for his case was set for December. A Fairbanks man who allegedly threatened two people with an axe was indicted by a grand jury yesterday. 52-year-old Randy Kangas was indicted on charges including first-degree burglary, third-degree felony assault, and four other misdemeanor charges. According to troopers, Kangas allegedly forced his way into a residence on Chena Ridge, threatened two occupants, and damaged property with the axe. He was arrested at his residence a short time later. Kangas is currently being held at Fairbanks Correctional Center and will be arraigned in Fairbanks Superior Court next week. After a deployment to Afghanistan, an aviation company sent a token of appreciation to a local business for their support. It was a flag that was flown over enemy territory during their deployment. During their time overseas, the Sugar Bears, a Chinook helicopter company, received numerous packages from North Pole Coffee Roasting Company in support of the troops. To show their gratitude, they sent the flag to the business owner, Tom Bartels, who said it's now proudly displayed above the mantle in his shop, along with a handwritten letter from the company commander thanking him for the support from home. Military is very important to us for, for multiple reasons, but just as a local community, uh, they are just uh, they're part of the family, and we hope that they always feel that way. Um, it's, just, it's just a small piece that we can do to reach out to our local military and send them, just let them know and remind them that home is thinking of them. It's huge, you know, I mean, you get packages from friends and family, but to know that the local community supports you as well, you know, it was a nice taste at home. So. An area elementary school decided to recognize their students' military parents today with a special event. Mike Schultz gives us a closer look. River Elementary School's multi-purpose room was the scene for a unique and special lunch today. Don Brashear, a counselor at the school, came up with the idea. And here at Wood River Elementary School, we have a smaller military population than, say, schools like Arctic Light. But we were brainstorming a way to show support to our military students and their parents. And it started out as a small pizza party in the library uh, about eight years ago. And we had tremendous turnout. And what was even more overwhelming was the gratitude that the families showed to us. Um, for our token of gratitude. And now it's blossomed to a little bit bigger event. We spruce up our multi-purpose room uh, and we provide a lunch for the children and parents that are uh, active or retired military to thank them for their service and their sacrifices and to let them know that here at the school that we do make an extra effort to support the children. The overflow crowd of military moms, dads, and grandparents were treated to pizzas, salads, and desserts along with games to play with the kids. One soldier says the gesture was really appreciated. Really great, uh, great that the, they can put this together for the military, appreciate the support. Um, I'm actually up from Anchorage uh, to visit. Uh, Xavier is my grandson, so good, good to spend time with him and uh, the kids, and it's, it's great that the community, uh, we appreciate the support the community provides to the military. Mike Schultz reporting. Oh, that was cute. It was. <laughs> that was great. All right. They had some pipes on them. Yeah, they did. They did. Good, Good singing. <clears throat> Joe Cook is next <laughs> with sports. We'll get highlights from all Thursday night sports action and the latest from the state volleyball tournament. I was hoping you'd sing that whole thing in honor of that. No, I don't sing. Stay tuned. <laughs>
Hello Interior Alaska, Joe Cook here in the sports seat for you this Friday evening. We begin with Ice Dogs hockey. After scoring eight and nine goals, you think the Ice Dogs will go for 10 against their rivals. Well, no 10 goal game in this one, but Fairbanks did get double digits in one category. We'll explain Fairbanks and Wenatchee while facing off Thursday night in game one of a three game series. Not high scoring as the first goal wasn't until about midway through the second period. And that was by Reiner Gorowski after getting the feed from Big Brother Hans and Ethan Samoza. Still 1-0 Ice Dogs until Chandler Madri, he can first a power play to make it a 2-0 game. When I choose Brendan Harris, he made it interesting with a power play goal of his own to cut the Wilds deficit to a goal with 7.48 left. The Ice Hogs, though, they closed out strong with goals from Todd Burgess and Somoza in the last six minutes of regulation. Burgess, Madrid, Somoza, and Reiner all had a goal in the helper while Hans Gorowski dished out two assists. Patrick Munson, 24 saves in his 11th win of the year. Fairbanks wins its 10th straight game and a 4-1 victory over Wenatchee. We had an okay first period. I thought we were a little sluggish in the second. Um, but, you know, our guys, they like to score goals, and um, they showed up and made a couple plays in the third period. I mean, we can't back down now. we got to keep rolling and bringing it to these guys. I mean, it's only the first, first game out of three. Yeah, they're a big rivalry, so we got to play them hard every night, and they're a good team, so we got to come out strong. A good five minutes of the game and see what happens from there. Only two games left in the UAF volleyball regular season, and the Nooks are looking to finish the season strong. On Thursday night, number 15 Western Washington with the GNAC opponent in the Patty Center. The Vikings got off to a great start, though, led by Kayla Erickson, who had a match high 12 kills and hit 57%. The Vikings took the first set 25-15 and never looked back, winning set two 25-9 and the third 25-18. UAF did have three players with at least six kills, led by Sam Hartoon's 10 kills, but the Nanooks had 31 total errors in the loss. The Nanooks season finale is Saturday night against Simon Frazier. Now the ASAA State Volleyball Tournament where West Valley was in a winner go home game this afternoon and West Valley they would be coming home. Another tough loss in five sets. This one the Kodiak West Valley forced a fifth set. Kodiak won the final set 15 to 10. The Wolfpack fall in a 22-25, 25-23, 25-27, 25-16, 10-15 final. And on Thursday night, Monroe sweeps Homer in three sets, winning 25-23, 25-19, 25-21. Monroe swept Grace Christian in their first game. The Rams will face the Mount Edgecombe Braves tonight at 7 in a battle of the only undefeated 3A teams. The winner advances to the state championship game on Saturday afternoon. And going to high school hockey, the North Pole Patriots had a shot at starting the season 3-0. The visiting Wasilla Warriors were looking for their first win of the season. 3-1 game in favor of the Warriors to start the third, and that lead would increase. Wasilla scored three goals in the second and third periods to pull away. Cody Butcher had a hat trick for the Warriors. Sophomore goalie Zach Curry got his first varsity win for the Warriors. Some bad putt luck for the Pats, who had a number of shots clang off the post and near goals in the last two periods. Carmel and Teal had, had North Pole's lone goal. Wasilla gets their first win, and North Pole suffers their first loss of the season. We played our position, most importantly, a lot better. You know, I think that's what we're lacking. We're a lot of, we have a lot of guys that um, haven't played together a lot, so it's a work in progress for sure. Pretty happy the way we played. We didn't give up. Uh, hit post two, three times in the third period. I think we would have, uh, it would have been a little bit different outcome. Going forward, I think we know what we have to work on. Um, this is a good test for us. It's a good team from the Valley. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with the way we played. Score doesn't show how we played. And there are a lot of sports events going on this weekend in the interior. Here's a brief rundown. Saturday morning at 9 a.m., the Hutchinson Meltdown Wrestling Tournament continues at Hutchinson High School. Wasilla and West Valley will face off at the Big Dipper at 115. Then Monroe and Tri-Valley, they follow at 345 in high school hockey. In the nightcap, the UF Volleyball season finale. The Nanas take on Simon Frazier at 7 p.m. in the Patty Center. And at 7.30, the Fairbanks Ice Dogs wrap up their three-game series against the Wenatchee Wild at the Big Dipper. For the full list of local sports events for this weekend, visit the sports page on website11.com. It's Friday night, and now we reveal the play of the week. This week's top play is from the North Pole hockey team, James Laslafi and McCoy Walker's career nights in a win. They win the votes in this for this week's play of the week in a landslide. Last Tuesday, Last Lofley had his first career hat trick and Walker his first career shutout as the Patriots went eight to nothing over Monroe in the 2014-2015 Interior Hockey Season opener. To pick the next play of the week, watch the I-5 Interior Top 5 Plays on Mondays during the weekend recap. 
And that's it for Sports at 6. Come back tonight for a loaded Sports Nightcap with highlights from tonight's sports action and a lot more. Your full weather forecast is next, and we'll catch you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back into the Fairbanks Evening News. Mike Schultz with you once again, taking a look at the weather. And it was just like it was yesterday, the day before, the day before that. No change. Uh, temperatures are going to cool down a little bit for tomorrow, but then slowly warm back up again. And still no signs of any major changes on the horizon. We'll talk more weather in a little bit. Photograph tonight, sent in by Bayard Folsom, who was on the Dalton Highway. He was able to capture these uh, cool cloud structures there. Looks like it's probably be some stratocumulus or even some altocumulus at the higher levels. Again, as always, if you have a photograph to share, by all means, send it to photos at ktvf11.com. Here's what you're uh, looking at right now as far as your fab photos. The calendars are going fast. There are many places across the interior that are giving them away free. And if you want to know which one they are, we'll go to our website, webcenter11.com, and check out and see which one's closest to you and get them because they are going, like I said, really fast. Numbers look like this. Today's high 22, right now 13 degrees. The overnight low last night 12, a record high 45. That was set in 2013, 41 below in 1956. Sunrise at 927, sunset 345, giving us six hours and 17 minutes of daylight. That's a loss of six minutes from yesterday. A couple of advisories here. First of all, Aurora Watch, Aurora Watch, try saying that three times real fast, is for moderate auroras tonight, but increasing through the weekend. So keep an eye out for that. And of course, once again, we have an air quality alert in effect for North Pole, unhealthy for you folks there and unhealthy for sensitive groups in the Fairbanks area. Our satellite and radar looks like this. And again, we're talking about uh, a little bit of a change as you can see the high pressure really becoming very dominant. Starting to tilt a little bit, though. That allows a little more moisture to come across the southwest portion of the state, but still clear skies as far as we're concerned. Now, lower 48 weather we'll talk about in just a little bit because that's the high pressure that's really affecting them. But across Anchorage right now, rain around Kodiak Island, clear skies over southeast Alaska, cloudy skies along the Aleutian chain, partly cloudy skies up and down the west coast, and cloudy skies around Barrow. To the lower 48 we go, and we're looking at temperatures very chilly once again around Seattle, 45 degrees. Billings, Montana, 11 degrees. Denver, 13 degrees. Still chilly in Minneapolis, 24 to the east, uh, things are cooling down too. 48 degrees in New York and 47 degrees in New Orleans. How about that? On the satellite and radar, again, look at all the big white masses that are uh, all across much of the country. The pink indicating where, like I said, the frozen precipitation is at. And the key factor for next week, <clears throat> it's going to get even colder over the eastern half of the country as the polar vortex continues its movement. And the long-range outlook is calling for a fresh Arctic blast coming right on down to the Gulf Coast states with rain on the east coast and dry weather continuing on the west coast. All right, back to Alaska for tomorrow. Cloudy skies for Barrow, mostly sunny skies at Nome and scattered clouds in the Fort Yukon area. As far as the interior is concerned, part, mostly clear skies for Fairbanks and Delta, partly cloudy for Healy. Temperatures right around 20 degrees. Over southeast Alaska, mostly sunny skies for Juneau and sunny skies for Ketchikan. While over the, uh, the southwest part of the state, looking at scattered showers for Cold Bay and Bethel, wind and rain for Kodiak Island. And if you're heading on down the Anchorage area, they're looking at very nice weather, mostly sunny skies with patchy morning fog across the region. Temperatures warmer around Homer, 46 degrees there. Okay, here's your forecast for the remainder of the night. Scattered high clouds and warmer Temperatures in the hills, a little bit of inversion going on, zero degrees at the airport. Tomorrow's forecast calling for 20 degrees for the high at the airport, but again, warmer in the hills and uh, just scattered clouds here and there. And the extended forecast, temperatures pretty consistent all the way about across the board. Mid-20s for highs, overnight lows, uh, chilly uh, tomorrow night. And then after that, it slowly starts to warm back up again, once again, to the teens. And again, no precipitation in the forecast whatsoever. No snow, no rain, no nothing. No change. Thank nice. You, Mike. Well, thank you. That's a pretty good uh, forecast for the weekend. Yep. All right. That will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, new Pentagon studies raise concerns over U.S. nuclear arsenal. That's next with Brian Williams. A reminder, join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. We hope you join us tonight at 11 for New Center Final. But for now, from all of us here at the New Center. You have a great night. Good night.